Okay, so now that we have our uh, primary and so secondary colors that has been done and we have an albedo with a lot of information, so what we want to do is to kind of um, connect everything all together and to use the tertiary colors in order to kind of merge and to, to make to make sure that everything is like um, working in respect to the volume information, in respect to the surface information of our model. So in order to do that, what we will do is to use the MARI displacement that we did before and we will replicate that directly inside of the skin pores. So most of the time when we are doing that, we want to have the inside of the skin pores that will become slightly more reddish and more t and darker. And the outside of the skin pore will become a bit brighter. So that's something that will help also to enhance some of the volumes. So let's have a look at our MARI displacements. Okay, so that's what we have. Do we have any color management happening here? No. Um, okay, so I will want to use that. Let's have a look at this. Actually, we can use the MARI displacement out of the box without having to customize it uh, even more. So let me just create a new merge layer as we always did. We use merge no alpha. And this is kind of always the same workflow for that. So what we want to do is to use this um, merge and we want to merge it using an HSV. This HSV will be connected, will be using the secondary color of the base, and then um, we will connect that directly into the other. Or what you can do instead of doing that, if you want to add your own color, is you will use a color, and then let's say that you want to color things into red, because we are speaking about the inside of the skin pores, so it should be a little bit more reddish. So we just slightly saturate it a bit more and make it slightly darker like so. Okay, and when uh, I will connect this merge into other, what I want to do is to put this one into darken and multiply mode. So this is one way of doing it, or you also have the way of using uh, HSV. I think that HSV is probably best to use here, but both are working fine. It's up to you guys. Okay, and um, so I will connect it directly. I will connect the Marie displacement directly at the mask here. And let's have a look at what it's doing. So it should be, it shouldn't be doing anything uh, out of the box because of the fact that is it working? Yeah, it's working. That's weird. Okay. If I don't check that, okay, actually, let's try to merge it um, with a normal merge. Okay, just doing it like this. Let's have a look at this merge now. Okay, so it's working, and when I'm connecting the um, my displacement, it shouldn't get any darker. Okay, it's working now. I don't know why. Maybe it was something happening with the merge no alpha. We had some issues with the color space, so I'm not sure. But anyway, this is what I have at the moment. So I want to make this value to become darker and more saturated and slightly more red, like so. Um, at the moment, if I'm having a look at this Marie displacement mask, um, this is how it's controlled. So everything that is white or brighter will give the information on, which means that this, this HSV will happen everywhere where we have some brighter value, and it will not happen when we have some darker value. So we want to do exactly the opposite. So in order to do that, again, as we did before, brightness lookup, will become our uh, guide here. Okay, and I will start by inverting the brightness lookup so I can isolate the inside of the skin pores, make them way brighter, like this. 
And let's have a look at this merge now. So we should have the effect happening only inside of the skin pause. So now we color the inside of the skin pause. So of course, because we are playing with a lot of different uh, settings, so what you want to do at the end of the day is once you will get everything that will be combined together is that you will have to go back to your various adjustments and maybe reduce a bit of this, the saturation effect that you added because adding saturation on top of other saturations is making the value to become um, too pronounced and sometimes illegal uh, as um, rendering engines, engines like to say. So you just want to get rid of that, just want to make to reduce the, eff the different effects. Okay. And maybe we'll make that a bit brighter or I will just reduce the effect of this noise like this. Anyway, let's go back to our tertiary colors. So this is the first pass for my tertiary colors. Again, if I'm getting rid of that, then um, and showing it again, then I will I should be able to see the inside of the skin pores becoming a bit more red. If I'm saturating it a bit more, then again I will really have this kind of redness effect. And let's make it a bit brighter for now. So what we want to do, so if we have, as before, if we have the inside of the skin pores, so dark um, and disp HSV, if we have the inside that is becoming darker, then we want the outside to become brighter. Brightness lookup, PLU, and then Control C, Control V. Connect this as a mask again. Okay, let's see what this guy is doing. Should be doing the exact same effect, but as we said, we want to reverse it. So this one will become brighter and less saturated and maybe a tad more yellow. Okay. And because the mask is the same, then what we want to do here is simply to revert it. So it's having the opposite effect. And now it's adding more volume to the outside of the, of the skin pores. So this is before and this is after. So this effect is way too visible, uh, but again, it's up to your own uh, it's up, sorry, to your own judgment, uh, how much you want to impact the volume, how you, how much you want to use the skin pores to do that. Um, totally up to you guys. Um, and nothing is fixed. Everything is controlled procedurally. So if you're not happy with anything, if you're not happy with the primary color, then it's up to you to change the primary colors of your model. If you think that this pattern, for example, if you, the dark values are way too dark, what I can do is just go back to my primary colors, select this, okay, select the area where I had the dark pattern, which should be the latest, this one, I use a black, okay, select the black, make it less pronounced, and you will see that it will add an effect on all the downstream, the downstreamed nodes. Click on save. If I want to get rid of a bit of, bit of black, I can select this layer. Uh, this is a layer, as I told you before, we should be out of a, a GRP in order for it to be trans transformable to, um, to a material. So I will have to adjust that later. But what I can do here is, for example, to use basic brush like this one and remove a bit of some blacks informations 
inside of this layer. So why is that? Yeah, it's working. Okay. Control C. So it should be not at the black information, but probably on the mid brown. Yeah, it's happening on the mid brown. So I will just reduce a bit of this. I can just pen here and it's updating everything. And even more cool, if I'm not happy with the Mari displacement, let's save that out. Go back to the main node and let's say I'm not happy with the Mari displacement. So what I should do, because I'm using this, uh, I should uncheck this use baked. So it's now live and not using any bakes, baked information. So if I want to replace some of the skin pores I had before, I will just have to select this M disp layer, use my pen through, and with my pen through I can now load, for example, this um, skin texture. Let's load this one. This one should be a bit cheaper. Okay. Resize it the way I want. And start painting it and as you can see now it's updating the albedo as well so what we will see later is that it will also update the uh, spec and spec roofness map if we need it to and now I can just bake the information If I'm not happy if, with the area where I have the uh, lips, again, we just load the lips from my Texture XYZ pack, make it bigger, show it wherever I want. Maybe I want to make that symmetrical. Okay, and now I can paint again my mask like this and bake it. So I'm showing you that on the albedo information, but as you'll be able to see, if I'm having a look directly at my Arnold surface uh, material, what will happen is that if I'm repainting only the um, Mari displacement layer, it's taking a bit of time to update it because everything need, needs to be live and uh, procedurally control. But if I want to show my model with the shader now, and I want to update this, then it's updating the displacement information, as well as the albedo information. And because I'm uh, showing the model with, the, with a shader, it's also influencing the specularity. Okay, F1 to show the albedo, F2 to show the volume, and F3 to show with the spec happening. So I have full correspondence between surface and between albedo informations. So let's do quickly a bit of cleaning here. So this one is not our dark MDs anymore. It's more like our bright MDs. HSV. Just copy the information here. Copy the name, sorry. Pass it here. Whoops. Bright MDs. Bright. MDISP MRG. Okay. I can select all of these nodes, group them, or before I'm grouping them, what I want to do is to keep things clear. So we just use backdrop. I name that into tertiary colors. Okay, and now I can group it. Re 
rename this group into tertiary colors underscore grp um, backdrop okay let's dive into this group so we can clean the connections this one is supposed to be our secondary colors in so I can replace the different connections here okay and this one I think has to become our mdisp this guy and this guy and now I have everything that is clean now if I'm going back into the main node graph this is what is happening so what we want to do now that we have the um, the different colors the different albedo information and we can just basically select all at once um, do a backdrop select this backdrop and put the order a little bit smaller than what it was before Okay, select another color. Something maybe a bit pink. Not really saturated. Like the tint of the skin. Something like that. And um, actually, I think that it's working better when it's darker. And just rename that into our albedo. Okay, what if I just, no, it's not working. Okay, if I'm just selecting everything and clicking on L, it's not sorting them uh, properly, but it's not, it's not a problem. Um, just want to do a bit of manual sorting here. Okay, so this will be my ISO. Let's put backdrop and rename that into ISO. If we had more ISOs, we could use the same backdrop for them. And then I will use a technical color to make sure that it's something that I can really easily identify. And the MDisp should be a bit more gray because of course displacement or a bump is starting with a mid gray value. And okay, and now I can save. And I have my albedo and my displacement information that are ready. So now we have now that we have everything that is ready with the uh, albedo and uh, my displacements, we can start to dive into the specular information for our model. So this is it for this video. See you in the next one.